Hi everybody, it's Cassie from Cassie Creates. I'm so happy that you stopped by today because we're going to be making a fun card for Father's Day. It's a golf card. Now, my dad loves to golf, loves to golf, and I have to say he's very good at it. He's been golfing for a long time since he was a boy. So I thought, you know what? What a perfect time to make him a card for Father's Day that has to do with golf. Now I don't have any golf themed stamps or dies or anything like that, but I looked through my stash to see what I had and came up with kind of a pieced together golf card, I'd like to call it. Here I am with my cuddle bug. I'm cutting out a circle. This is the double stitched circle from Gina K Designs. I love her dies, as you could probably tell if you have seen other videos that I have done. <laughs> so I have cut that circle out and it has the double stitching around it. This is the smallest of the double st stitched circles. It's still fairly big because it is meant to be used for sentiments and things, but I thought the stitching would be super cute for a golf ball to match stitching on a background that I will be um, compiling into the card here in a little while. So there you saw me running my um, uh, this embossing folder through. I, I didn't have you know a, a perfect golf ball looking embossing folder but I had this old one from Provocraft for the cuddle bug um, and it's this dots folder dots embossing folder and what I did was I flipped it upside down so that way they would impress into the paper, the dots would impress instead of popping out and making like polka dots. Um, that way it would look more like a golf ball. And of course you could use a, a you know a Swiss dots folder or something along those lines if you don't have a large dot folder like this one. And there it is. Ta-da! I thought it looked pretty close to a golf ball and I really like the double stitching around it. This background, as you can see, I have many backgrounds that I've made with my gel press. It's almost like a form of therapy for me <laughs> to come up and do um, gel pressing to make extra backgrounds. Now this green background I already had finished and one of my dad's other favorite colors is orange. He loves the Tennessee Volunteers. He went to that school for college so I thought maybe I could put it on this orange background and kind of upon looking at it I was like hmm, I'm not so sure that those shades really go together very well I've been trying to use up this card but the card base with the orange but meh oh well so I just sort of put it to the side and are you surprised I had the tent fold out but I didn't use the tent fold cards the portrait tent fold I wanted to just use a regular A2 size card base. Um, I have a bunch of those I need to use. So here you see um, kind of I was thinking through alright what am I going to do to make this look more golfy and I thought well let's put the hole that the golf ball is going to go into. So I have these great nesting dies. These are the Spellbinders nest abilities. Um, ovals. You can cut with them, emboss with them, stencil with them. They're the large ovals, I think is what it's called, or classic oval. Classic oval large is the set. And I thought, you know, for perspective, it's not going to be perfect, obviously. I think it would have to be a little bit more smushed to look perfect with perspective. But I thought, you know, this would be fun if I made the um, hole that the golf ball is going to go into. And of course it would absolutely go in if my dad were the one that was putting the ball in or chipping it in even, or maybe even driving it in, who knows? You know, that would be the ultimate, I suppose, hole in one. So I'm going to get my uh, trusty old cuddle bug back out. There it is. And grab my plates to cut with this time. So my sandwich is the A plate, the B plate, and the C plate. And I reserve one of my B plates for the embossing of course it's A plate, B plate, B plate. And I reserve one of my B plates 
and my C plate to be not for cutting. So I only have one B plate that gets cut up really bad. And um, I learned a great trick for de-warping it. You can put put it in boiling water and it will it won't go back perfectly to shape, but it goes back pretty close. So I've done that a few times with this plate and it's still holding on, still cutting. So I'm going to use it as long as I possibly can. <laughs> so I've cut this um, hole out of some black cardstock and I'm not 110% sure of the brand of this cardstock. I believe I got it at Michael's. I think it's the Coordinations, yeah, the Black Cat cardstock, which I like. It's cost effective. It looks nice. I really like to use it. I use it a lot. I've got quite a bit of it. it and it goes on sale fairly frequently, so you can get it at a nice price um, or use a coupon on it, which is awesome because if you're like me, you go through a lot of black cardstock for um, obviously for, for projects like this, but especially for outlining. Um, I use a lot of because I, I use Gina's um, master layouts, I do a lot of stacking um, and using the, of papers and using the black to make that beautiful little shadow outline behind um, my main background papers. So now I'm just sort of figuring it out. And you know guys, I'm just trying this video out. I didn't speed through a lot of it. I left a lot of it kind of real time and didn't really cut out a lot so it seems like this is taking forever but honestly this card probably took me about 45 minutes to make um, you're more than welcome of course to skip through if you find this part to be a little bit boring um, I just wanted to try it out something different this time and show you kind of my creative process so it's a little more on my end I feel like I'm a little more truthful <laughs> <laughs> not speeding through it and and you you don't you know get to see the time that it takes for me to sit and look and make decisions and that takes quite a bit of time that's what I'm doing here is making decisions so this awesome hero arts set I use it I feel like constantly it's the hero arts I think it's called celebrate every day stamp set it, it's really stamps for all occasions Happy Easter, 4th of July, Halloween, Happy Graduation, Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, um, Thanksgiving, Father's Day, Patrick's Day, New Year, St. Patrick's Day I meant to say. Um, I think that's all of them. And it's just a great set. I love this set. So I grabbed out the Father's Day. And as you can see, this gel press background that I had already made, it's got a little white space down at the bottom of it and I thought you know what the Happy Father's Day would fit down there really well and it would look like I meant to do it that way which I totally didn't I just accidentally had my paper kind of offset from my gel press. <laughs> Making lemonade out of lemons it's an art form which is why we craft. <laughs> So I'm kind of looking at this and thinking, all right, what do I, what do I want to do here? So to, I, I don't want to tack things down permanently just yet because I'm not sold on placement. So I just grabbed some regular tape and um, just made a little tape loop and stuck the, the black hole on, and then grabbed my misty because I wanted to see where the Happy Father's Day should go in relation to the black hole being over top of it, or recited I mean. So I left that there, stuck on there, and carefully um, placed this into my MISTI stamping tool. As you can see, I rarely use the pad under underneath. I use the foam pad, but I don't use the, the paper pad that comes underneath it. It's just your preference, whatever you prefer. I just prefer to have the black foam under my um, stamping on my MISTI, but you can absolutely do whatever works best for you. Here's a quick trick. Um, I'm sure that other people have done it, but I just f did this, figured it out myself one day. I take my weeding tool. Um, this is just one that I got with my Cricut eons ago. Um, it's for weeding vinyl. And I take it so that 
these Hero Art stamps are great, high quality photopolymer. As a result, they're pretty sticky, and I like them to stay sticky. Some people want them to be less sticky. They rub their finger over them, or you know, do something else to make it not as sticky. But I like them being sticky. Um, that's my preference. As a result, though, it can be difficult to not have them stick to my fingers when I'm very, very carefully trying to place them. So I take my weeding tool and I just poke poke at the, the sentiment until it's straight so that way it doesn't stick to my hand. Um, so now sometimes it will stick to the weeding tool. It's not 100% foolproof. But if you're careful with it, then it won't stick to the weeding tool. And of course I don't press down the, the tip, the the pokey tip of the weeding tool so I don't puncture the, the stamp or anything. I just move it very carefully with the side of my um, weeding tool. Now then I have stamped this with Sembamento Tuxedo Black ink and I'm going in now after cleaning this stamp off I'm going back in with Versamark because I love to have that clear heat embossing over top of my sentiments. It makes it look really professional in my opinion. It just gives it that extra oomph. It helps it to stand out, especially if you've got a busy card. This card isn't super busy, but it's got enough going on that the Happy Father's Day might get a little bit lost. Um, so having that clear embossing over top the black, it intensifies it, it makes it look more professional. Um, just all very positive things. So I went ahead and stamped that down and I did it I think twice. I looked away for just a moment. <laughs> I think I did it twice. I usually try to so that way I can be sure that the Versamark is on there. Now one tip with Versamark is you don't want to press too hard. Um, the same goes when you're when you're practicing with your clear stamps you've probably noticed. If you press your clear stamps too hard then they kind of blow out and they don't give a very crisp image because you've pressed um, extra um, of the photopolymer or whatever else is whatever stamps you're using you've pressed it so hard that you've pressed other parts of the stamp down and it's made it kind of blow out so the same goes with the Versamark if you push your stamp down too hard it's kind of hard to see because it's clear ink right but if you push your stamp down really hard then you're gonna get that blowout effect and when you go to put your pot embossing powder over it it's gonna give you kind of a uh, watermark looking outline around your text which if that's what you're going for cool do it I like it best if it's just com completely like perfectly over top the um, sentiment embossing the, or the sentiment stamping that I had already done so just a quick tip for you you saw me using my clear embossing powder. Any clear embossing powder would work for this um, heat embossing. And I used my heat tool, let it heat up for a little bit before um, embossing. So that way it doesn't warp the paper as much. Now I was ready at this point to assemble, I thought. I thought I had pretty much got it down, but then I thought, you know, I really think that this could use something else, a little extra. So there I am again with my Gina K Master Layout Styles. Now this one is not the, um, it's in the same Master Layouts package, which I think was Master Layouts 2 that has the stitching in it. And this is the coordinating die that goes with it. Um, it's not stitched. It is the shadow die for that stitched rectangle. So here I am cutting that out with black um, with a piece of that. Now you could use, if you really were thrifty, you could use the piece, uh, you know, I had already done that oval cut out and I still had a panel. You could do that, um, but for even dimension, I just went ahead and used a new piece of black paper and I saved that other piece of black hat black paper with the oval circle cut out or the oval <laughs> excuse me the oval cut out of it um, for another project when I need something smaller like a flag um, or something cut out I'll save it for that 
so I've got that black panel and here I'm just kind of thinking through making some decisions um, and I went ahead and undid this of course I had some temporary tape stuck on there but now I'm going to grab the real stuff <laughs> I'm going to use my tape runner and I'm taping the panel the green front panel taping it to the black coordinating panel that is not stitched. So I've got this single stitched rectangle and it goes atop the shadow rectangle just perfectly. I still am not great at lining these things up. I, I feel like I never get it perfectly in the center but I am not deterred. I still practice and do the best that I can do. So there it is. Doo, 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 doo. Now then, I think that just gives it a little bit oomph. Helps it stand out. If you really wanted it to stand out some more, of course you could do like we did in a previous video where we took the foam sheets and put the foam behind it. You could put foam tape behind it, whatever, to give it a little bit of dimension. But I just wanted it to lay flat because I wanted to pop up the golf ball and I didn't want to distract from that. Plus, you have to be careful if you get too much dimension going on. It might not fit in your envelope um, or it might cause some additional weight and then you have to get a, another stamp for your envelope to send it through the mail. Or I suppose they make the two ounce stamps as well, but I just use two stamps because that's just what I have, two regular stamps. So now then I have taped it down to my card base and I reinforced that fold at the top with my bone folder so it was nice and crisp because it was giving me a little bit of attitude and kept popping up when I was trying to to do stuff and now I am nearly in vain trying to remember where I put <laughs> where I put the black hole there um, the first time when I stamped the Happy Father's Day and this you know I could have cut this out but again, I wanted you guys to see it takes it takes some time to make these kinds of decisions. This is the first time I had made this card. I hadn't made a pre-video um, card. And sometimes I do that where I'll make the card first so I know what I'm going to do so I have less dead time. And sometimes I'll just sit down and create and then just cut out the time later. This is one of those times where I just sat down and started creating. And um, it took it took some time. I, I wanted to keep this, like I said, real time too because I want you guys and gals to feel like, if you ever feel like, wow, it takes me forever to make a card. I watch these stamping videos and they go by so fast and I think, oh, I could totally do that. And then I get up to my craft room and I've got like 20 minutes maybe and or 10 or 15 or whatever and all of a sudden, you know, trying to craft it's taking forever and it's just not getting done. What's wrong with me? Why can't I get this done quickly? It's it's not you. I mean, you have to remember that you're you're watching videos that have been edited. And I edit my videos too. That's no shade on anybody who edits their videos. Everybody does. Um But it does take time to to make a quality product. And that's that kind of time is what we're passing on when we give cards to others. And they appreciate it, I'm sure. So what you just saw me do is cutting out a flagpole for my hole out of a piece of white Nina cardstock 65 pound weight which is what that black is by the way if I didn't say it earlier all of my layering is 65 pound my card base is 120 I meant to order 110 and I ordered 120 so they're extra thick they're very very fancy <laughs> but I have to be careful on how much I put on them <laughs> weight wise <laughs> to go through the mail <laughs> so I cut that out just quickly and you saw me kind of lining it up and seeing what I wanted to do there. Now I'm taking my X-Acto knife and it's kind of hard to see. Please excuse my head. It's kind of hard to see. I also had a part right there so it looked really freaky in my hair but it's just my part. And I cut a slit in the middle so I could put the flag down into it just like that. Dun, da, da, dun, dun, da, 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 da. 
And I thought, okay, so next step, am I going to cut the flag off? Hmm. The flagpole, I mean, am I going to wrap it around? Am I going to what? I just couldn't decide. And then I, I made a decision on something else. And I thought, before I make that decision, how about, because it's so stark white and it looks pretty much the same as the card base, why don't I color it? So I'm taking a piece of scrap paper and my alcohol markers, and this is the lightest shade other than the clear. Uh, the clear is for blending, right? It's it's not the clear blender. It's the lightest shade, which I think is called clear, clear, excuse me, cold, cool, cool gray two, one, CG, and a Roman numeral two, and then O one. Um, for this brand, this Cali Art brand. These are not super fancy, to my knowledge. They were affordable, and I liked them when I saw them on Amazon.com. So, there we are. So this is the cool gray, it's the lightest color. And I'm coloring this shade on. After that, I'm going to take my blender, and I'm just going to take the fine edge and run it along the middle. And what that will do is that'll create a kind of a light stripe in the middle so it'll make the pole look a little more rounded like actual flag poles in golf are they're they're rounded so i thought that would make it look a little nicer a little more fancy if i colored it that way then i'm taking this flag pole and again putting it through that slit that I cut with the X-Acto knife and just sort of lining it up and seeing where I think it should go. Now then, what you didn't see me do was I ended up taking the flagpole and wrapping it around the top of the card and then I drew a little flag on it just to be funny because if you open the card you'll see the, the whole flagpole with the little flag flapping in the breeze. I thought that was just, it was just cute, just something fun to do. And here I am, I've, I've adhered things. The whole, um, I flipped it over and I cut off the excess to match my card. Et voila, there we go. Now all I have to do is add some tape. There we are nice and popped up. So here I printed off um, from a template that I made myself. Um, you are the best dad, par none. Happy Father's Day. And I'm going to cut this out. Um, these squares, these dotted lines are in the A2 card size. I'm just trimming it with my paper trimmer. I printed this on my laser printer so I could foil it because as you guys heard before, I just got a mink mini and I'm loving it and want to foil everything. So this last bit I did cut out a, a bit of time for you. Um, so you guys could just see where I'm going. At first I thought I would like just the black and then I thought, mm, nah, I'll go ahead and foil it. <laughs> so I decided silver foil would look the nicest. My dad's more of a silver guy, I think, most of the time than a gold guy. So went ahead and grabbed the silver and just cut out a piece and I'm lining it up. Then I will put it into my carrier, or my transfer carrier sheet, I guess you should call it. This is just regular printer paper, computer paper, typing paper. That's it. And after that's done, for the grand reveal, peel it right off, and there it is. Beautiful. Gosh, I just love this. I just want to print and foil all day long, but, you know, alas that's not what my life is right now <laughs> just when I'm able to I will so I did see where there were some places cuz I I kind of messily changed my toner recently and it's it keeps printing weird every now and again there were some little spotting places on here so I just took my mono sand eraser and erased the foil that was in the wrong place and it erased just fine I love this sand eraser honestly when it comes to staples in the craft room, um, this is one of them, is that sand eraser. Just beautiful results. Every time I use it, it's so 
handy. I don't know how I did it with, I mean, I guess I just had a bunch of mistakes before I had it, but. So anywho, there we are, friends. There's our little card, and it's got the little flag, <laughs> little flag on the back, so when you open it up, doo -doo -doo -doo, that's what it looks like. I just thought this was super duper fun. And I really like that it's super personal, you know? It's personal. It's for my my dad. And I just glued that uh, that inside um, greeting in there with some tape. And that's it. Friends, I want to say a big thank you again for watching. Especially this video was so long and a bit tedious. But uh, thank you for sticking around. And I hope I'll see you next time. I'll cut it down a little more next time if this one was hard to watch. But thanks again, everybody. See ya.